Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions to your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? Um, today's video is going to be adventurous, it's going to be interesting as usual, and then it's going to be fun as well. You know, um, when you are working on Google Ads and then you want to get um, the elevation data directly from Google Ads, most times it's always um, impossible. Only the information you can get is what your, let's say, your latitude and your longitude, or let's say, your eastern and your northern, depending on what format you set it on. So what we are going to show you on this video is how to attach the altitude value, or let's say how to attach altitude to what to your latitude and your longitude you got from uh, from Google Earth. So this will help you maybe if you want to carry out um, them, or maybe if you want to carry out graph or so anything you want to do that has to do with height. That um, altitude can help you do what get the the height of the terrain, and then you can be able to work with it. So we are going to work on maybe one or two softwares and maybe a few online tools. So if you're coming to the channel for the first time, please um, help us by subscribing to the channel. And if you've always been there, thanks for always um, checking up on us. Now, the first thing is, um, this is the, um, the search icon, or let's say the search key or the search command or the search panel. So we are going to work on a particular location called um, Kumari in Bono State. So we will navigate to that um, to that location. Let's search. We we'll navigate to that location. Then we are going to do what? We are going to randomly pick some points, and we are now going to get the altitude information of those points. So let's say here we are. This is the location we want to work on. And you know, most of the times when you want to do anything like maybe topo or if you want to get them, there will always be a boundary. Is that not? Good. So on the channel, there is a video on how to move a um, card to KML. So we'll leave the link to that video on the description section where you can see how to move what card to KML. Like you have a card boundary with four points, five points, the boundary of the plot you want to work on, and then you want to move it toward to Google Earth and KML is a um, Google Earth um, file extension. So you want to move to Google so that you can be able to now have your boundary. And then within your boundary, you now get your your grid points. And with those grid points, you can now be able to get your what to get the height or let's say the altitude or the elevation of those points. And then you can move what you can move on. Now, um, but on this video, we are not going to import any form of boundary. We are going to get the boundary directly from what from Google Earth. So we are going to use this um, add polygon tool. Yes, we are going to use this add polygon tool. Now, what this does is that it enables you to define a polygon. As the name implies, add polygon. It enables you to define a polygon. So, you are going to use this um, cursor as it has been displayed on your screen to now define a polygon within your area of what? Your area of interest. So, let's say we are covering these um, four corners. Now, maybe by the time you start using it, let's just call this um, area of interest. Or let's say our boundary, B O U N D A R Y. Good. Let's call it our boundary. Now, the reason for going to style and color is that perhaps when you start, your own will be under um, field and outline. However, you would not like field and outline like this. That means it is field. You can't see through it. So you just have to change it to only outline so that you can what so that you can see through it. And then maybe if your color is not on red, you can move it to any color you so desire, and then that will be the color of the word. That will be the color of the boundary. So for for this video, we are going to use what we are going to use red, or we want to use red for this video. Now you can see that what we have our boundary. We have our boundary, right? So this can be the boundary you have exported, or maybe you have brought in from AutoCAD to what to KML. So a link to that video will be on the description section because most of the times you would have your own predetermined what boundary. Now the next thing is we now want to determine the grid point. We want to mark out the grid point, the grid points on which we want to get what our elevation within this uh, within this boundary. Then we come to this um, order to call them um, add parts. Good. You click on this add parts tool. What this does is that it enables you to pick points randomly 
So if you want to give it maybe a form of interval and then you try to manage your cursor, how you click the point, that will also be better. And then the more the points, the better the, the elevation. So let's just call this um, contour or, okay, let's call it um, contour then. Would that be fair? If we call this um, contour then. Now you just you pick points. So we are going to do this for the purpose of um, learning. Maybe when you want to do it very well, you ensure that um, you, ah, it's even fair. It's very, very good as it is like this. So although there are some points close to the boundary that we have um, skipped, however, it's still fair as we are taking them. So this is how you do it. You pick the point round the what round or within the boundary rather. You pick the points within the boundary. Now you can see our intervals are very big or let's say our intervals are very large. So when you want to walk, you would know how to work, how to get your intervals. And also pay attention to um, this um, intersection because sometimes when it gets stuck at the intersection, it used to um, be difficult to move away from there. So that's why we are careful trying to do it, trying to select our point where we don't have so much of a, so much of an intersection. So these are you pick your grid points within what within your boundary. So you can see us, it's more like uh, we are even doing greedy, uh, uh, something like that. So these are the points whose what whose elevation will be what will be determined in a couple of minutes. In a couple of minutes. So we are still going. Okay, we are here. Let's see, we still get no row. So, so, let's see, that's okay. You just click on OK. So, it will be saved as what? As contour them. Just save it. That means we have a path as it is, and we also have what? We also have a boundary. Now, the next thing we are going to do now is that we are going to save this our path and boundary especially the boundary we are going to save it as what we are, our path rather which is the contour then we are going to save it as um we are going to save it as a place what as a kml file so you right click on it by the time you are finished working on it you would see on this your places layer you would see it as um, it's been highlighted that means it's working so you can maybe put it on or put it off as the case may be so you just right click on that particular folder and then or layer and then you go towards save places as so you save it as what a kml file you save it as what a kml file so we are going to call it um console them as sorry there and we are going to save it as a kml file we are working on a particular folder so most times i also advise to work on a particular folder so that you have all your information together so we have what we have saved it and this is the first step now the next step or the next thing we are going to do is that we are going to another tool called a GPS visualizer. Now that GPS visualizer is an online tool. All right, so you come to the online tool we want to use, which is what the GPS visualizer. So this um, GPS visualizer will enable us to what they add the elevation data to that um, part we have saved from Google Earth. So We just come to this tab and then we go to GPS visualizer forward slash what elevation good so this is the page where we can assess the the, the, the tool or the feature where can uh, where we can um, get the elevation data um, added or maybe attached or assigned to what to our coordinates assigns them elevation data to what to coordinate as you can see there to um, them database and we click on what choose file we click on choose file so this will now navigate us to wherever the wherever the um the kml file we have saved earlier is and then i believe it's on the folder we are working on so you just navigate us to where that folder is and then we can be able to just click on that um that kml file and to assign the elevation data to that um, to that coordinate or to those coordinates 
coordinate in that file. So it's coming up. Good. So this is it. Control underscore them. That's what we used to save it. Now we open it. So now the next thing is that you can see that the file will soon be uploaded. No choosing file. The file will soon be uploaded. And when the file is uploaded, you will see it here that code it has been uploaded. Now this is the file we are working on. Now on this um, convert and add elevation, there are two outputs as we can see here. By the time you click on the drop down, you will see the other output, which is what the plain text and the GPX file. Which is what the plain text and the GPX file. So good. Now the GPX file will take us to the next online tool we are going to use. However, the plain text, if you download it as a plain text, you can be able to access it on Notepad and then you perform a few more modifications on it maybe to see your elevation however we are going to use the gpx file and that gpx file as i said earlier it will take us to what to the next to the next tool we are going to use so you click on this word convert and then add elevation by the time you click on this convert and add elevation the 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 kml file you have uploaded earlier the elevation data will be attached to those coordinates and then you can be able to access those coordinates and download it now you can see that the file is out. This is the file we are going to download, and then we just download it, and we will find it on our um, on our, is it, um, our download folder. So you click on this file, and then it will soon start to download. So now the next thing I want to show us is this um, TCS converter. Now this TCS converter, as I said earlier, it has the online version, and it also has the software you can download. So you can download rather. So we would leave the link to downloading this um, to accessing this um, particular page on the description section. But we are going to use um, the, the downloaded version, the software we downloaded, and that's what we are going to use for this video. So now, yes, that um, GPX file has been downloaded here. So the next thing is what we either we go to the download folder, and then we can be able to access it there. Good. This is the file here. So we just cut it from here. Control X and then we paste it on the folder we are working on we are working on a particular folder yes good we paste it on the folder we are working on. so by the time we paste it here we can just change the name remember the name here is not something we can actually be using we just modify the name so let's call this um prelim prelim data let's call this um, prelim data good so this is the prelim data we are going to use now the next thing we are now going to use is that as we said earlier we are now going to use that um, tcs converter now this is the tcs converter when you download it and then you install it on your computer this is how it was there and you can actually toggle around there to change the language or maybe to the preferred language we are using english so you do what you click on open file by the time you click on open file it will direct you Direct you to the folder where you can access what you can access the readable files. And we are using this um, last GPX data we downloaded while we use what the, um, the GPS visualizer. So we just open it. By the time we open it, we can see what our last long and what the altitude. And remember that is the altitude that is the main thing we are looking for. Now, by the time you come to um, track modify, you can also update the altitude, but that's not what we need now. We just want to export that's what as a csv file we just want to export it as a csv file so you just come to save as csv file or maybe save csv file now this prelim data we we'll just call instead of calling it prelim data now we we'll just call it um, modified um, modified data we we'll call it modified data because we we'll still need to get our final data so instead of having it as a, okay the csv file is the default extension so we can't do anything about that so it's asking us are we using semicolon as a separator or we are using comma so we want to use comma because of what the csv so we say no because that's the option for using comma by the time we go back to our folder we are working on which is an edge so far we can see what our modified data there now the next thing is for us to open this modified data and then do the last form of um let's say editing before ever we take it to the last software Okay, now we've been able to assess that um, the modified data we saved as um, CSV on what on Excel. Now you know most times we don't need most of this um, information on this column. What we need is the latitude, longitude, and what the altitude. So the best we can do for ourselves is to what is to delete them. We just delete that 
and then we come to distance and then we highlight all that and we also what we also delete now the next thing i want to show us is that you know when you are trying to bring in the data as we said earlier to suffer you won't have it as latitude you would rather have it as what longitude and what latitude not um, latitude and longitude so in essence what we are trying to do is that we are trying to bring the longitude first before what before the latitude and then finally the altitude so this is the format because the format is mostly what x y z are we together so this empty column we still delete them so we now have what our file in form of what large long and what and altitude so we still don't need this same um, heading so we still what we delete the heading so finally we now have our grid points and the what the altitude attached to all of the points so we are going to save this so we save it as what normal or maybe the default um, excel um, excel format and then um, save it as the default excel format instead of the csv so we call this our data is the working data instead of the csv we are just going to save it as an um, excel workbook which is, which is what we are going to save it as so we just call it data and then we save so this means that we now have our what our longitude latitude and what our what our altitude it now takes us to the final or let's say the last stage of um, this video which is what assessing it on what on sofa so by the time you come to sofa you go to grid and then you go to data then you navigate to that um, maybe folder you are working on and then you select the file so remember we are working with data which is this right so we open it good upon opening it we can see maybe we can still view the data to see if they are okay remember that we are having what longitude latitude and what altitude is that not good we are having longitude latitude and what altitude so the next thing we can do for ourselves is just to confirm that it's okay and we're having xyz so we see the output grid file the folder is still x to so far we are using which means it's okay so we just click on okay now on this um, on the channel there are, there are two videos one how to plot contours on so far and the other one how to plot contours um, on autocad so the links to those videos will be left on the description section where you can be able to access those videos and you what you see how maybe the set of data we use there and again if you have issues maybe if you want to do something like this and maybe it's an assignment a tax a project you can always contact us and we'll help you do that now the grid file has been created as it's stated there so we come to map we go to new map and then we go to what we go to control map and we just assess that grid file we created earlier which is this and we try to what we open it good upon opening it we can now see what the contour has been plotted the contour has been what the contour has been plotted so if you want to see it as a 3d map you still come to that um, you come to map you go to new and then you go to 3d surface and then you still use that um, um, the grid file we created the other time and that is the same grid file we are still going to use and you still see what you still see the 3d um, depiction of what of the terrain now the data you have that you've been exporting to sofa you can export it to any other um, software that can give you maybe this same um, this same information so on this video we have been able to show you how to assign um, altitude to what we have been able to show you how to assign altitude to what your coordinates from what from google earth from google earth we created a path and then from the path we moved it to gps visualizer from gps visualizer we moved it to tcs converter from TCS Converter, we moved it to Microsoft Excel, and from Microsoft Excel, we moved it towards Sofa. And then this is actually the products we got from all the stuff we have done today. So as I said earlier, if you need our help in carrying out any tax like this, you can easily contact us and we'll get back to you. So yeah, thanks for coming to class. Please, if you've not subscribed to the channel, encourage us by subscribing to the channel. And all the links we promised you will be on the description section. And there will be a link on the description section on how to support us too, because your support means a lot to us. It can always come in, you know, very, very or less well appreciated. So we'll be expecting your support as well. And we'll also be leaving the links to those other videos we promised you on the description section. So we believe we've provided solution to this um, particular solving problem. Thanks for coming to class. We'll see you on the next video. Until then, keep being good at what you're doing. Bye.